thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. If you do have an encounter to tell, send to SoCal Sasquatch Organization at gmail.com. We now have SCSO Keep On Squatchin' t-shirts available. See link in description below. Join the community and show it off wherever you go. Report number 57880, Class Alpha. Submitted by witness on Saturday, July 15th. 2017. Juvenile observed during the daytime by a bow hunter near Alto Pass. Year 2013. Season Fall. Month October. Date 29th. State Illinois. County Union County. Location details. I cannot explain directions but could show by map. The names of the roads are not on the signs. Nearest town, Alto Pass. Observed. I am an avid outdoorsman and bow hunter in southern Illinois. I have hunted all over the U.S., seeing many animals in all kinds of terrain. But this day was not like any other I have ever had. I was heading to some public land that adjoins to the river trail. I drove between two orchard fields to get there. I have hunted this spot many times. I have seen numerous mountain lions, bobcats, coyotes, etc. in this location. I unloaded my gear and set off to a part of the public land rarely visited by people. If not for me, I doubt anyone would ever go back to the spot. It was right around 11.30 a.m. I had been walking approximately 30 to 45 minutes into the woods. I came to around 900 yards from my spot. It was pretty open. The leaves had fallen off the trees and I could see a good distance. I started walking and I heard a snap of a branch other than mine. I believed it to be a deer, so I stopped behind a big white oak tree in which I was behind and leaned against it. I went to peer around it, and I couldn't believe my eyes. It's like nothing I have ever seen before. I was approximately 78 yards away, according to my rangefinder. I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me as to what I had seen. It was gray with a slight bit of tan and brown mixed into its coat. It looked to be around four and a half to five feet tall. It did stand on two legs, but I believe it smelled me when the wind picked up and blew towards it. And it dropped very, very low to the ground, lower than a bear could go, and I ducked back behind the tree. When I looked back from behind the tree, it was gone. I believed it was a baby Bigfoot, as I have heard rumors and stories of this public land from countless people and friends being chased up trees, rocks thrown at them, and their stands being ripped to shreds. Also noticed, I had one more encounter at this location two weeks later. I have not been back since the last sighting. It was not a baby. Other witnesses, zero. Other stories, yes people seeing or being chased up trees by two-legged creature with black or cinnamon colored fur. Timing conditions, very bright light, few clouds, the trees had just lost a lot of their leaves and had very good visibility that day even with the little bit of undergrowth. Environment, very thick brush leading into hills of hardwoods with the back part of a lake around one mile away. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Stan Courtney. I spoke with the witness by phone. In summary, what appears to have been a juvenile animal was observed by a bow hunter. The animal was 78 yards away. The animal was four and a half to five feet tall and standing upright. The animal was gray with a slight bit of tan and brown 
mixed into its coat. The witness is follows. Report number 59073, Class Alpha. Submitted by witness on Saturday, February 17, 2018. Bow Hunter has another daylight sighting from his stand near Alto Pass. Year 2013. Season Fall. Month November. Date the 12th. State Illinois. County Union County. Nearest town Alto Pass. Observed. I was sitting in my deer stand at 10 in the morning. I heard something going through the brush and observed a solid black, 8 foot tall animal walking across a small clearing. It walked 30 to 40 feet to get through the clearing and it was 40 yards from my deer stand. It was muscular with broad shoulders. As I was in my deer stand and, it, and I did not make any sounds, I don't believe it knew I was there and it never looked in my direction. Other witnesses? No. Other stories? I had one more encounter at this location two weeks earlier. Time and conditions? 10 a.m. Environment? Thick brush and hardwoods. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Stan Courtney. I spoke with the witness by phone. In summary, the witness watched from his deer stand an upright animal walk across a clearing. The animal was 40 yards away. The animal was 8 feet tall. The animal had a muscular build with wide shoulders. The animal was solid black in coloring. Report number 61157, Class Bravo. Year 2018. Location details just off Dole Valley Road, a bit east of Coldwater Creek Campground. Observed, my wife and I were driving late in the night trying to reach the Coldwater Creek Campground near Yakult. By the time we got there, the campground was full. We kept driving and stopped at the first logging road that had a suitably flat spot for camping. We sleep in the back of our SUV. It was a short, dead-end logging road in a recovering clear-cut. We set up camp and went to sleep. Around 2.30 a.m., my wife awoke to our pet rabbit scrambling around in the driver's footwell. The rabbit had gotten down there and couldn't get back up. As my wife reached up there to rescue the bunny, she felt something firmly touch her leg. She described it as a firm press and then deliberate downward motion. At first, she was confused because we were inside the car, but then she remembered that we kept the sliding rear windows open slightly for ventilation. The spot where she was touched was pressed against that opening. We built a sleeping platform in our car that puts us near the level of the windows. She heard nothing super obvious, but immediately afterwards she thinks she heard a couple of extremely light footfalls. We stayed mostly silent for about an hour, just listening for anything, but heard nothing else. I finally mustered the courage to peek out a window, but couldn't see anything. The next morning, we found very large, muddy fingerprints on our car near where my wife was touched. We have pictures of these prints, which we would be glad to submit. In the photos, you can see where I tried to recreate the prints with my own fingers. I have medium-sized hands and the prints are much larger. We looked around a bit, taking note of things. On my wife's side of the car was only a fairly narrow strip of road and after that was dry, crunchy grass and brush. Whatever touched her had to be able to walk along the narrow strip, otherwise we would have heard it in the dry brush. It also had to be tall enough to reach the window. We feel these factors probably rule out four-legged animals. We considered the idea that a person could have been messing with us, but there are some issues with that which makes us skeptical. First, 
we feel a person wouldn't have been so quiet. Second, we find that it hard to believe someone trying to scare us would have simply touched her leg, left Prince, and called it good. More than likely, a person would have taken things farther than that. That would really be showing a lot of restraint for a prankster. Last, the prince would have been a very large person, one who also thought to get their hands muddy beforehand. Also notice just the fingerprints. Other witnesses, my wife was the only one who experienced the touch, but we both saw the fingerprints. Other stories, I only know of the other reports in the area from your site. Time and conditions, about 2.30 a.m., clear but dark outside. I believe the moon was visible, but I can't remember how much. Environment, clear-cut, bordered by evergreen forest, logging land. Somewhere nearby was moving water, but we couldn't see it. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Charles Lamica. I interviewed the witness telephonically on 18 November 2018. I mostly spoke with C, the wife of the gentleman who filed the report. One note of correction, this event took place near Cold Creek Campground, not Coldwater Creek Campground. I've synopsized C's statements below. We own a 1995 Mitsubishi Montero SUV. We modified the back end of it by adding a sleeping platform where we sleep when we are camping. We have a pet rabbit that travels with us. When we got to Cold Creek Campground and found it was full, we drove further up the road and pulled off into an old clear cut to spend the night. It was about 11 p.m. when we got there. Because the air temperature was mild, we left the side windows open when we went to bed. The night was dark with not much of a moon. Late in the night, I was awakened by the sound of our rabbit scrambling around. It was up in the front seat area of the car. I had been sleeping on the platform in the back on the driver's side of the vehicle. I was on my side with my body facing towards the outside of the car. As I was reaching forward to check on the rabbit, I suddenly felt something grab my leg near the knee. It felt like a hand. It pushed down firmly on my leg, then slid down my leg about an inch. I instinctively pulled away from the touch and completely froze. I was too scared to look out the window. I heard two soft footfalls on the driver's side of the car, the side I was on. They sounded to be moving away from me. I never went back to sleep. About 5.30 a.m. I finally had to get out of the car because I needed to go to the bathroom. That's when we found the palm print and fingerprints on the window of the car. My husband photographed them with his cell phone. The prints are much larger than a normal human's prints. This is the second time we've had a nighttime visitor while camping. The first time we were camping in the Mount Baker area. It was earlier in the summer. At that time, we heard some really deep hooting sounds, almost like an owl, but so deep and resonant that we could feel the sounds in our chest. The sounds were close and made us so nervous that we decided to leave. We packed up and went home because of it. An interesting note is that both times we've had possible Bigfoot activity, we had our rabbit in the car with us. I found C's story to be compelling, and it was obvious that recalling the incident was an emotional situation for her. I could hear the fear in her voice while she was describing the event to me. I explained to C that Sasquatches seem to have an overpowering curiosity about humans, which causes some Sasquatches to approach under the cover of darkness to further investigate intruders. I don't know if the presence of the pet rabbit enhanced the curiosity of a Sasquatch, but it's an interesting thought that perhaps the rabbit was scrambling about because a giant ape was peering at it through the window. Report number 58251, Class Alpha. Submitted by witness on Saturday, September 23, 2017. Wife and husband find tracks, have afternoon sighting near Hell Roaring Ridge. 
Year 2017. Season, Fall. Month, September. Date, 9-22-2017. State, Idaho. County, Bonner County. Nearest town, Samuels. Nearest road, Pack River Road. Observed. My husband has been working logging in the Hell Roaring Canyon on Pack River for the last two weeks. One day he texted me saying, this is the first day I don't feel alone up here. My husband and I are avid hunters and enjoy our mountain time. The next day I ended up going to work with him. Later on we decided to go for a walk down an old dirt road that isn't accessed with a key to the gate. We came across what appears to be a large footprint. My husband wears a size 12 and this print was a few inches bigger. I have a photo. We never seen or heard anything else that day. On September 22nd, we decided to go bear hunting on the other side of the mountain. We also had a key for that gate. We drove in 11 miles and to the left of me, there's an old clear cut, but saplings growing and must be at least 10 to 15 feet tall. I see something black and standing tall and moving through these trees. I yell at my husband to stop and this black figure is gone. I can't find it anywhere. We continue driving, no luck at all, don't even see a deer. We decide to turn around and go back in this same exact spot which is now on my husband's side. He slams on the brakes and says, what the hell is that, give me the gun. I hand the gun and lean over to him. To see what he's looking at, it's a tall black figure with a head, no ears, very wide shoulders, and couldn't see the bottom part there. There was a tree in the way. He stares back and takes a step to the left behind a tree. All this happened within 40 seconds or so. He vanishes again. At this point, I have tears in my eyes and scared to death. My husband was sick to his stomach, almost to the point of being sick. We were both so confused on what just happened. We started driving and about 400 yards up the road on his side again, he seen something move at, at, the, at the corner of his eye. He looked quickly and these branches on these trees about seven feet high were moving right in a road like something very tall had just ran through pushing them out of its way. We are positive, 100% positive this wasn't a bear or person. We are convinced what we seen last night was, had to have been, Bigfoot. Also noticed, we both thought it was odd we didn't see anything out and the wildlife tracks we we did see were running. It could have been from us or they could have been running from something else that we'll never know. Other witnesses, just myself and my husband. Other stories, we have two tracks, one from this year and one from a year ago in this area. Also, there was a logger that said he couldn't wait to leave that area. He never felt like he was alone. Time and conditions, I first seen it right around 545. My husband seen it, I'm thinking close to 620. It got dark at 643 and it wasn't quite dark yet. Things were still vis visible. Environment, this figure was in an old clear cut with freshly planted saplings about five years back or so. They were getting pretty tall. The rest of the area is super thick with timber and old cedar stumps about a mile away is Caribou Lake. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Kevin Llewellyn. I talked to the wife and husband by phone. The tracks and sighting were behind locked gates. In October or November 2016, they found a track about 16 inches long and 6 to 7 inches wide, but was somewhat washed out. In September 2017, they found a similar track with five toes, no claws, that was 2 plus inches deep in drying mud. These tracks were one quarter to one half mile apart. They were about one mile from the siding. On September 22, 2017, while bear hunting, the wife saw for just one second, less than 100 yards away, a black upright figure move through the saplings. 
She estimates the figure was eight feet tall. She did not see arms swing. On the way back in the same location, the husband saw a black upright figure of similar height and shoulders three or more feet wide. It was 75 to 100 yards away, and he was amazed at the, um, at the mass of it. It had a rounded head with no ears and no snout. He did not see arms. He said there was no brown nose like a bear. He looked at it for 15 to 20 sec seconds when it stepped to its left behind a tamarack tree as if trying to hide. Tamarack western larch have short needles that turn yellow in the fall and the husband could still see the black figure standing motionless through the yellow buffs. He tried to look through his rifle scope, but in those couple of seconds of getting the rifle out of the window, the figure was gone. Just ten seconds down the road, he saw branches moving seven feet high. The side window was down the entire time, and he did not detect any odor. The husband grew up in northern Idaho. He has been a long-time avid hunter, including bear. As a logger, he is in the forest daily. He was confused at what he saw and was nauseated all the way back to the gate. He also becomes upset recalling the sighting. I find him credible. Report number 60877, Class B. Submitted by witness on Thursday, August 23, 2018. Mother and daughter have a scary daytime encounter while hiking on North Twin Cone. Year 2018. Season summer month august date 23rd state colorado county park county location details the road on the east side of kenosha pass campground that takes you up to the twin cones the rock throwing and tree knocking occurred off the road about 15 minutes from the top it was at the campsite on the right side. Nearest town, Jefferson, Colorado. Nearest road, 285. Observed. Oh my God is all that we can say. It is Thursday, August 23rd, 2018, and we are just getting to our vehicle from a harrowing hike. We were hiking the road at Kenosha Pass on the east side that takes you to the Twin Cones above the tree line. We began our hike at noon and hiked up the road. We reached the Twin Cone tree line area at 3.30 p.m. It was a beautiful and uneventful hike until we were headed back down the road. My daughter had said she thought that she had heard a tree knock and I was being silly and took a rock and knocked on a large rock off of the road and then tossed the rock about five feet off of the road. Literally two minutes later we both heard multiple loud tree knocking and rocks were whizzing past our heads. The stench was unbearable like nothing I have ever smelled before. My 21-year-old daughter began to scream and cry as we were under attack by someone or something. I was so startled that I just stood there frozen as this dark figure was staring back at me. I couldn't move. My daughter grabbed my arm and we took off. I had an air horn that I depressed three times as we were running away and that seemed to, de to deter the rock throwing. The rock throwing continued for five more minutes as we ran down the hill. We were almost to our vehicle which was parked off the dirt road when we heard a loud guttural whoop off the road and a bit and we just kept running to the car so very very afraid. We made it back to our vehicle at 6.15 p.m. I will never return and we are not okay with this. This needs to be investigated, please. Also notice the horrible stench that we smelled just before the rock throwing attack. The only thing that seemed to end the rock throwing was that I had an air horn that I blew three times as we were trying to escape the attack. Other witnesses, myself and my 21 year old daughter, we were walking down the road. Other stories? No. 
Time and conditions, 4.45 p.m. Environment, heavily forested pine aspen trees. I spoke with both witnesses via phone and email immediately after the sighting report was submitted. Both witnesses seemed very credible and genuine and were able to describe the encounter in great detail. Both witnesses were clearly upset by the encounter and expressed their desire to never visit the location again. I visited the site of the encounter myself on the following Monday. The activity took place just below a tree line at approximately 11,000 feet of elevation. I did observe what appeared to be a partial footprint and discovered a possible hiding sleeping area as well, which had a very distinct odor. The odor was notable, but not as intense as described by the witnesses during their encounter. The mother provided slightly more detail with regards to her observation of the actual creature. She emphasized her strong feeling that the creature was hostile and that she felt it might charge at her and her daughter. The daughter purposely did not look at the creature due to the sheer terror she felt at the time. The mother felt that deploying the air horn gave them the opportunity to leave the scene without further, further interaction with the figure she observed. Since rocks were being thrown from another direction at the time of the sighting, it would seem clear that there were multiple creatures. The witnesses were clear that they were followed several miles down the mountain back to their car and at that point they were further startled by a loud roar scream from the tree line. Although they felt that they were under attack, they were not hit by any rocks. We have received many reports of rock throwing, which is most likely an intimidation behavior where they wish for you to leave. If they wanted to hit their mark a human, they would be able to if that is what they were aiming for without much effort. When you find the signs of Sasquatch in so many areas of the world, it will absolutely make your head spin, or at a minimum you will ask yourself, what the heck is this thing? Red glowing eyes. Many reports of red glowing eyes in which the eyes are reported to be sometimes orange or white usually seen at the 8-foot level, but sometimes reported as low as a foot off the ground when Bigfoot tries not to be seen. Many people see the red eyes peering through windows or tree lines and shifting back and forth. The eyes can be yellow, green, or blue too. Squatch eyes illuminate at night and give them outstanding night vision abilities. Report number 2115, Class Alpha. Date, May 19, 1994. Nearest town, Boulder, Utah. Observed, in June 1996, I was hiking in the Escalante Wilderness on a bench between the Gulch and Deer Creek. There are a number of stony rises between the two areas, and my friend and I had to cross the bench in order to make camp at Deer Creek. As we hiked in a westward direction, the sun was directly overhead. I was the first to notice the movement at the top of the rise. We were less than a mile from the top and pointed it out to my companion. We wondered what it could be. I have hiked in this area and never seen anyone up on the bench during this time of day over the previous 15 years. And though this had a human shape, it was too large and it was white. I mean, paper white, not ca Caucasian. The creature appeared to be pacing as it looked for something. Suddenly, I became very aware it had spotted us as it ducked behind the rocky outcroppings and was obscured from our view. As we were hiking toward the area to cross the bench, we observed as we got closer that the area where the creature stood that it was on the highest point and would require all of our climbing skills to reach. Not knowing what it was, if it was dangerous or wanted to be left alone, or if it was even there any longer, 
and being nearly exhausted from our hike and almost out of water, I decided we would hike over the bench and down to Deer Creek. About a half of a mile down the westward slope, we both had that feeling that we were being watched. We both turned and looked up to, to that area where we had previously sighted the creature, and it was watching us again, then quickly ducked down so we could not see it. I wrote about it in my journal, which I have kept for many years, but I'm writing from memory now. I never thought of this as being a Bigfoot sighting, as I hadn't heard anyone ever describe a white Bigfoot. But a friend of mine, who is a Bigfoot enthusiast, directed me to this site. I am still not sure what it was, though I am relatively sure it wasn't human. Too big and entirely white. Also noticed, no, other witnesses, two witnesses hiking. Time and conditions, this happened about 1,300 to 1,400 hours. It was clear and dry, and the area of the sighting was clear of trees or brush. Stone formations did obscure the view of the creature. Environment, this was between Deer Creek and the Gulch, north of the Escalante River, but south of Boulder. Report number 4692, Class Alpha. Noon sighting by family of four near Mount Washburn, Yellowstone National Park. Year, 2002. Season, summer. Month, July. Date, 19th. County, Park County. Location details, it was on a ridge on a road in Mount Washburn, Wyoming. Nearest town, Canyon Junction, Wyoming, Yellowstone National Park. Nearest road, Grand Loop Road. Observed. I was in my parents' car on the northwest side of Mount Washburn in Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming, when my mom, dad, brother, and I saw a humanoid figure too tall to be a human walking upright along a ridge around 300 yards off. It looked hairy and between 8 and 10 feet tall. It was around noon and it was partly cloudy and my family was scanning the ridge for bighorn sheep when we saw it. Also noticed we had not heard of anything unusual before, during, or after the sighting. Other witnesses, including me, four people saw as we were scouting a ridge for bighorn sheep. Other stories, my family hadn't heard of any odd incidents in this area. Time and conditions, it was partly cloudy and was about noon at the time. Environment, it was on a ridge with trees sc scattered around. Follow-up investigation report. The witness and his parents were interviewed by telephone on 4 August 2002 by R.D. McQuistian, Wyoming investigator. Because the witness is a minor, I spoke with his mother, the witness, and his father in turn. All three were consistent in their recollection of the sighting and are considered to be credible. As they drove north along Grand Loop Road in the vicinity of Mount Washburn in Yellowstone National Park, they observed a dark, bipedal animal silhouetted on a ridge about 300 to 400 yards from them, walking purposefully across a clearing between stands of trees. The animal's direction of movement was southerly. The biped was described by all as being about eight to nine feet tall, covered with dark brown hair, having a robust upper body with a large, wide chest and shoulders, and walking upslope much as a human would slightly bent forward as a person might be if they were using a walking stick. Arm swing was implied. The witness's mother stated that she looked for a snout but saw none, although the animal was in profile. The witness's father stated that he observed the biped as it took about 15 to 20 steps before losing sight of it. The witnesses variously observed the biped for 
5 to 20 seconds. The location of the sighting was within two minutes driving time of the Mount Washburn Ranger Station cutoff. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. If you do have an encounter to tell, send to SoCal Sasquatch Organization at gmail.com. We now have SCSO Keep On Squatching t-shirts available. See link in description below. Join the community and show it off wherever you go.